Hi, in this tutorial, I'll talk about how to store content in Google Sheet or Excel. If you want your content to be consumed in JSON format by either Franklin Block or some third party system, then you store content in spreadsheet, in Google spreadsheet or Excel as per your project. So as part of this tutorial, I'll talk about in detail how to store content in Google Sheet or Excel about different scenarios if you have single sheet or if you have multiple sheets means you have like in Google sheet one sheet or multiple sheet in same file how that endpoint can be accessed means this endpoint is serve JSON content and how exactly you can access a specific data means you can use query parameter using offset and limit to access a specific content means you can implement pagination in your Franklin block or some third party if you have a lot of content and then we'll see how exactly you can display that content in Franklin block. So as I said, Franklin translate spreadsheet by default, you don't need to write any functionality for it. Franklin translate your spreadsheet, either Google sheet or Excel in JSON format. So that now, as soon as you publish that sheet, a endpoint is available and that endpoint serve a JSON content, which is stored in that file. And this, this can be consumed by any third party or Franklin block and query parameter you use, can use to access specific content and implement pagination. So either you are using Google sheet or Excel. So the two scenarios is possible in one sheet. You have can have only one sheet where all the content is there, right? And you can have multiple sheets in single file. We'll see that what I'm talking about in a bit in a demo. Then if you have multiple sheets in a file, then you should have a specific name. Otherwise your content won't be translated in JSON format. So each sheet, is prefixed by helix and hyphen name whatever name you want to have so we'll see that in detail right so if you have single sheet then you can access that content using url and file name dot json now this is available right using this the entire content is available as a json format you can use query parameters limit and offset to implement pagination or to access a specific data if you have multiple sheet, as I already explained, uh, your sheets should have a specific prefix in name, specific prefix called helix and then hyphen whatever the name is. If you have only single sheet, then you can name it helix dot default. Those content will be available, right? If a multiple means if you want a specific sheet as a default sheet so that you don't use any query parameter to access that content then you can have a name helix hyphen default i know it's confusing we'll see that in detail in you know in demo in a bit if, if you have a multi sheets so what you can do and if you want to access the content of a multi sheet so you can do uh, the endpoints means file dot json this query parameter sheet and the name of that sheet okay not starting with helix after helix whatever the name we had and again you can use offset and limit now let's get into a demo for better understanding and you will understand all the concept what i'm trying to explain so i'll give a example where i can create a sheet and that content i will display in a franklin block so in my project directory means google drive i created a excel called countries and inside this i have four columns countries, capitals, continent, and abbreviation. So I have the name of countries as well as the name of capital and continent under which continent those countries comes. Simple, uh, Excel, and the name is sheet. I did not give specific name over here. So as soon as I uh, publish this sheet, let me preview this so that it will be available in preview environment and see the content is available here. So you see the content is available in table, but this is just a Franklin functionality to see this content in tabular format. Ideally, this content in, in JSON format. Let me close this sidekick. So as soon as I close this, you will see that content in JSON format. And then content has total countries offset zero limit 195. 195 is the total content. So this is used to display your content specific content if you want to implement pagination right so you can use query parameter offset and limit 
to see content means specific content so let me and if you see this this path and the name of file and the json so this is in my parent directory so that's why you don't see other path here this is on root right so now let me say offset offset is say zero so as I said, offset zero, limit 10 means offset means st should start from zero. And what is the limit? How many con means rows here? 10. So if you see the starting from the first, first Afghanistan, and now it is showing 10 content, mean 10 rows. So if I start here, let's say start from 10. Now it will showing the next 10 content starting from 10. So that way you can implement pagination if you want to. Now, now how you use this now this is this endpoints now this content is available as the endpoint so now whenever or wherever you want to hit that endpoints that content is available right this is the endpoint created and this content is available as a json format now uh, i'll show you how you can access that content in blog so what i'll do here i created a page here means a document it should be uh, this blocks and here countries. So what did I do? Uh, I simply create a table where I am saying the name is equal to table. So I'll keep the name of my block is table and inside this countries. So this will add as a class and here I add only a link and link is my endpoint. Keep in mind this you see is a link okay not simple text okay so i created this and i preview this means i move to preview environment so nothing would happen here why uh, let me access this to my local right if you see here why it is coming now i add created a blog I'll show you how where I'm I'm creating a table and in table I'm accessing that content now let's see how this is happening this is just for your refer your reference you can use or implement as per your requirement this is just an example to show you you can access this content in your blog so if you would see I created a blog called table and here the decorate function every block should have decorate function at as I have already explained this here I got this link means not link exactly the element as a link in this countries and then I got that link href for that link and I created you if you see here I created a div just to hold that content means hold the table you will understand I'll push that code to my git Again, I added some classes here and I call create a function called create table. So inside this create table, I got that link means endpoint and inside endpoint, I'm making this call fetch by fetch that entire data is available from that entire data. I got only the data which I need here means all the rows and here I got the header. So I created a function to uh, create header part of it and inside this this is the function actually which is accessing the content of row and creating one row of that table and that's it now once this is done so i'm returning the table out of it right i create a table if you see here you see create table inside table create header and accessing that each row means each object of that json and creating a row of that table once i have this table if you come back here this in and i created a div here and i'm adding that table inside div so finally there's a div and there's a table so what you see here here is that same thing i'm accessing that content one by one and i'm adding in a table now this is very simple use case so you can implement as per your need you can access that content so what i'll show you one more thing here uh, query parameter how you can dynamically do that so what I'll do I'll create a drop down here and inside that drop down I'll add the name of con means continents and once you choose some continent I will make a call with continent as a query parameter 
and that data will display here but what i'll changes i make here so what i'll do now there's a one sheet so if you see if you don't give any name by default that content is available if i make multiple sheets then what will happen here let me create a sheets here and divide each content data in separate sheet and in this sheet i will keep entire data okay so i have updated the sheet in my first sheet is helix hyphen default if you want to access when you hit the endpoint, if you want some default content to be served, then it should be in Helix hyphen default. And all the names, sheet names should start with Helix and then hyphen and then whatever name you want. So if you see here, I created multiple sheets, Helix Australia, where I have names of the countries which comes in Australian content, in American content and the same I created five sheets along with the default. So what should happen when I preview this? So because I have added all the countries in default. So if you see this is the data which is coming from the default sheet. I did not mention anything here, but if you want to access a specific sheet. So what you should do. So what you should do, you should say sheet. Okay, sheet question query parameter sheet is equal to whatever the name here is let's say asia but without helix so what i'll do uh, sheet is equal to asia right if you see now now only the content from asia is available means content from the specific sheet is available that way you can access a specific content uh, of a specific sheet here that's the use case if you have multiple sheets if you have single sheet then this data will be available as the endpoint so now I created a drop down here and before that create table, I call a function. I created a function, say create map, select map, whatever you want to call it. That's simple. Basically in this function, I'm creating a drop down where I'm hard coding the values of it. Let's say all countries, Asia, key value pair, that's it. If you want to dynamically provide those values, you can replace this map with your dynamic endpoint. Our the another use case could be you can create another table with these uh, another Excel or another sheet using these values. So I'm doing it hard coded now and I'm accessing those here and creating the items of that drop down. Simple, right? And here, if you see, I'm just creating a div and appending those, you know, drop down in that div and returning that div. So what happened now? Here, if you see now in this first, I'm creating that drop down and returning here. So I'm adding that drop down to parent div, and later I'm creating the table and add appending again to that parent div. This this line is very important. What I'm doing here, I'm just replacing that uh, href means anchor tag where that tab means link I added in my table with this parent div. So that link is replaced by entire my drop down and my table and here i'm just writing a function change change event of that drop down where i'm calling that function again with query parameter if you see here query parameter and in normal case i'm just calling that endpoint without query parameter that's it very simple you can understand this by seeing code very easily now if i come back here you see this let me refresh this so by default i as i'm not selecting or changing anything all the content is available and this content is coming from helix hyphen default so if i select something here let's say australia which has minimum countries if i see the table has been rebuilt again using with specific data now i'm making a call means to endpoint using sheet is equal to australia right simple use case if i choose america so i'm just making a call again so that was the very simple use case of how you, you can structure your content in sheet and how you can consume that data important part is the endpoints and the query parameters if you use if you have any question add your comment thank you